Okay, now we're ready to take a look at how software and hardware work together in a computer. Now, software and hardware first meet each other in what's called the boot process or the startup process. This is when we start the computer. At this point, BIOS takes an inventory of all the hardware. CMOS provides instructions on how hardware and software will work together, and software interacts directly with the CPU. Now, every device in a computer needs resources in order to be able to function. These are called system resources. One of these is an IRQ. This is a way that a device will use to interrupt the processor, letting it know that that device needs attention. Another system resource is an I.O. address, or an input-output address. This is a special number assigned to a hardware device that the software will use to get that device's attention. Each device will listen on its I.O. address. Hardware devices also need memory addresses. Most hardware comes with its own device drivers, and these will need to be loaded into memory in order to, for the device to be able to function. And then some devices use what's called a DMA channel, a direct memory access channel, which gives that device access to RAM without interrupting the processor. Now let's take a look at how the boot process works. First, we'll take a look at an overview. And then we'll look deeper into each step. Step number one, BIOS tests the hardware. This is called the post-test or power on self-test. In step number two, BIOS will search for and load an operating system. In step number three, the operating system will configure the system. And then finally, in step number four, the user will execute an application which pulls the whole thing together. So now let's take a look at each step closer. In step number one, the power on self-test, ROM BIOS, which is that hard-coded information we spoke of before, begins reading configuration information, which is stored in jumpers, as well as on the CMOS chip that we programmed with keyboard commands. The information is then compared with the hardware that's present in the computer. If there's configuration information for hardware that BIOS found, then that hardware will be set at this point. Step number two, BIOS will find and load the operating system. Most of the time, the operating system is going to be on the logical drive C, which is the first drive in the computer. The configuration information on the CMOS chip will tell BIOS where to look for the operating system. This is called the master boot record. BIOS will find that device, begin reading the files, copy them into memory, and then turn control over the operating system. Now, the operating system is smarter than BIOS, so the operating system will check some of the same things that BIOS checked. For example, it'll check memory, but it'll also check whether memory is reliable or not. Then the operating system will load the software to control the mouse, CD-ROM, possibly scanners, and other peripheral devices that are connected to the computer. And finally, the user will execute an application. This will pull everything together because BIOS will then have to work with device drivers, with the operating system, and then with the user's application software. So now that we know how the boot process works, in the next segment, we'll take a look at the files that are required to boot the most common operating systems.